Uh, we're now very pleased to be joined by Vernon Viper head coach and general manager, Jason McKee. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be here. Um, you wanted to see, I mean, when we talked about it in the pregame show and the other night in Victoria, there are games where you deserve better and don't get better. And the other night it was you got, you know, okay results despite an effort that wasn't quite there. Fair to say, though, that this one's a little bit more satisfying. It stings a little, I'm sure, but uh, my oh my, you guys played very well. Uh, yeah, I liked our third. Um, I, I think, you know, the first two periods, it was, I think, a very, you know, I, I didn't think in particular any, either team really pushed the issue in the first 40. And I thought in the third, we, we did. I thought we had a real good third. Um, you know, I think if we, if we play as well in the third, um, or sorry, you know, in the first two, like we did in the third, I think, you know, you're probably not in, in overtime, but, um, you know, we, uh, it's, it, it, it does sting a bit, you know, we were close there, a tough, tough break against us again. I, you know, I, I don't know. I have to watch the video on that one. I thought we had the win, but, uh, I guess they didn't see it that way and got to move on. You outshoot the opposition 12 to one in the third period. You wanted to see a bit of a buy-in and a dial-in and you're down bodies and you were down another body as Luke Ashton didn't play a whole lot after the, the first period. So you had to mix and match your, your lineups. It seemed like everybody responded really well. And then you hit a goal post and a crossbar respectively as well. Still lots of chances being generated. Yeah, like I said, our third was good. You know, I think that's where we, we started to create a little offense to our game and, uh, you know, we made it harder on them. We, we just had, you know, more jump in our step and, um, for whatever reason, those first 40, it was just kind of, you know, a, a sleeper, if you want to call it for me. It just, you know, there was times we really could have taken advantage and thought we did in the third, obviously. Uh, you know, we were unfortunate not to, to get one in the third, but, uh, um, you know, I think it's, uh, we have to play a certain way in order to, to create offense with our group. And we saw that in the third. And if we're willing to, it's hard though. You know, it's, it's hard for, you know, it's not easy and you got to do those things. And, um, when we commit to it, we, you know, we, we had a real good third, but, um, I don't think the game was won or lost, uh, you know, in the overtime or the shootout. It was, you know, those first 40 could have been uh, a difference maker in my opinion. Ethan Davids made two BCHL starts, both against the Bulldogs, and he has not allowed a goal through 125 minutes. Uh, it's sort of a coin flip in, in the shootout. Uh, he's got a little bit of a swagger. We could see that from up here, but uh, pretty special start for, for a young man who, you know, just goes in there and, and goes about his business, and he's been nearly perfect through two games. Yeah, he played well in the, you know, the, the game tonight uh, again, uh, which was which was good to see. Uh, you know, you, anytime you're going to win hockey games, you need to have good goaltending, and, uh, you know, we feel like we got two good young goalies, and he's off to uh, a good start here, which is, is good for, uh, you know, fitting in, getting his confidence, getting, you know, understanding the league. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's been nice to see. Um, you know, brings uh, energy to our group. He's a you know pretty positive kid and um, loves uh, being at the rink. So uh, happy to see him having uh, success early. Dylan Compton made his BCHL debut, and you didn't shy away from using him. He had some power play time. He had some uh, key minutes against big matchups. Didn't look out of place. Couple of subtle plays though that you know would sometimes get overlooked, but just some plays in his own zone and and offensively, he looked very comfortable for his first game. Yeah, no, he fit right in. Uh, he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't have known it if he didn't have the the cage on. I thought he uh, looked very comfortable out there. Like you said, uh, you know, a real, uh, real good player. Heads, he sees things, and uh, you know, was able to to make plays under pressure. And I think, uh, you know, with the the way the game is nowadays and everything happening so fast, uh, you know, he's. He's tailor made for it. He, he he can break pressure. He can uh, you know seize the middle of the ice. He gets pucks through and uh, just uh, you know a real real uh, high ceiling for the young man. Finally, you've got two points so far through this uh, three game island road swing. How important is it to try to duplicate this? I know it's a quick turnaround, two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but um, you know a chance against the Capitals to to try get yourself as close to a great weekend as you can. We need a win tomorrow. You know, I think if we get a win tomorrow, it's, uh, you know, a, a good trip for us. You know, we've been on the road here, and if we can get a win tomorrow and get four to six, uh, you know, we'll take that and, uh, you know, get back and one more. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a big game for our group tomorrow, and uh, we need to understand the urgency of that, and, uh, you know, we need the two points. As always, Jason, thank you for the time. Thank you. Head coach and general manager of the Vipers, Jason McKee, joining us here in the postgame show.